The knife tool in Affinity Designer allows you to draw a freehand or straight cutting line through any of your open curves, vector shapes or artistic text layers. And it also lets you cut into any curve layer to create a break in that shape, allowing you to make further edits on the fly too. It's a really creative tool, so let's see how it works with this design I have here. With this particular composition, I want to make my top text elements a little more dynamic, and I want to continue the design we've started on the right hand side of the lower section too. So the first thing we need to do is locate the knife tool from our tools panel on the left, and with this tool enabled, we can then tap on a vector layer itself to select the object we want to work with. And if I select this top section of text, we can then take a look at the context toolbar to see the options we have available to us. The stabilizer is a huge plus with this tool, as it really helps you to create smooth cuts and slices, but for now I'm going to make sure this is turned off and come back to it later on. I need my lines to be perfectly straight when they're cutting through the lettering, so I'm going to enable the straight line mode instead. And by dragging and using our single finger gesture control, we can keep our line to a 45 or 90 degree angle. As my lettering is set to a different angle, I need to be a bit more precise with how we cut into it. So by dragging across my design, I can then choose the angle and positioning of the rest of my cut line. And I'll make the first cut straight through all four of our letters. Notice that we started with an editable text layer, and then by creating our knife cut, our text is converted into curves and conveniently put into one single group layer. This is quite handy as it avoids us having to make these steps ourselves and helps us to keep our newly cut shapes nicely organized. Next, I'd like to select the lower parts of the lettering, which I can easily do with the knife tool still enabled, and I can use our single finger gesture again, this time to help us select the new sections we need as well. Now I'll slice through this section too, and then I'll just switch over to the move tool to select the new sections we've made and group them together into three parts. And I'll use our quick menu by long pressing to do this too. And I'll do it one more time at the top. And then I'll head to my layers panel and just reorder these accordingly. Now I can go over to my layer effects and here I'm going to add some outer shadow as this will help me add some depth to our newly sliced sections. Now I can drag to control some of the shadow settings and then use the sliders to make any more adjustments too. Next I'll jump back to my layers panel and then head over to our options, choose copy, select my next group and this time choose paste effects. This has just made sure the exact settings from before are copied over to the next group. Then with the move tool enabled, I can reposition these layers just to add even more depth as well. Now we're done with the top part of the design, I'm just going to quickly show you how we can take similar steps to create some additional shuttered segments we have in the right part of the design. And this time I'm going to enable the stabilizer setting and our context toolbar as well. This has two different options here. Personally, I prefer to use the rope setting as this gives you a predetermined stabilizer length, which you can control with the slider on the left but you might prefer to use the window option, which acts in more of an elasticated way, which can be quite useful at times too. And if you haven't used the stabilizer before, it's something you can also combine with any pencil or brush tool work, so it really is a useful addition in the apps. But with the new setting enabled, I can simply approach this letter here, then drag in to make my first cut, and use the extra rope length we have with this setting to pull back and help us create this triangular shape. I'll just do this a few more times to give you an idea of the effect we're after. Then I'll use the move tool to go in and reposition these new segments to match the other shattered parts of the design. And just one last example here, if I now turn off the stabilizer and turn on the auto close option, we can very quickly create some new segments in the middle of our letter. I'll then head back to the move tool. And then I'll use my layers panel and drag along the layer to multi-select the new shapes I've made and I'll just move these small segments out of my letter to help us create this textured effect. And you can see by repeating these steps across the rest of the letters, we can easily match the rest of our design. Now if I just switch over to this other design I have here, I'll show you a quick example of how you might use the scissor functionality with this tool too. So I have this branding example, and all of these curve layers are still editable. So one thing you might do in this scenario is with the knife tool selected, we can then click on one of these curves and then tap again to slice the curve at that particular point. This is a really quick and easy way to adjust these curves and it's something that might have taken us multiple steps if we were simply using the node tool and our menu options instead. But now let's jump to the node tool and let's make some adjustments 
to help us create a new part of our design. And you can see how this might be useful with much more complex designs, again helping you to avoid having to use lots of different menus and letting you simply make your slices on the fly. And then lastly, I just wanted to show you this final example using a similar process to our first section, but this time I'm going to use the 17 ellipse layers we have here. So I'll enable the knife tool, select my shapes, and then with the rope stabilizer enabled, I'll click and drag to take out a large section of the vinyl in the corner. And just like that, we've instantly sliced through our 17 layers and we're left with these new sections. So I'll go back to the move tool, reselect the new layers, and move them away from the design as intended. And I'll just do that one more time in the corner just to get the full effect we're after. Which just shows you how powerful this new feature really is, especially when you're working with a large amount of layers like we are here. So that was just a few examples of how you might use the knife and scissor tools in Affinity Designer 2 for iPad. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next one.